Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. Despite having a terrible pre-order experience, the Nexus 4 is likely to be one of the best Android smartphones for a while to come. So in this video, we're going to unbox it and give you some first impressions. Let's get to it. Now the reason people are so excited about the Nexus 4 is really for three reasons. Number one, the Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro has proven to be the fastest chip available in a mobile device. It smashes everything in the benchmarks, in day-to-day -day usage it is fantastic, and it sips power. So it's great for battery life. Number two, the display. We saw it on the Optimus G and now it's coming to the Nexus 4. LG's amazing display, it's got 1280 by 768 resolution, so higher than 1280 by 720. 720p. It's got fantastic color saturation, great contrast, and overall it just is a fantastic display. And number three, Android 4.2 brings some awesome new features like widgets on your lock screen and photosphere. And unfortunately the Nexus 4 doesn't have LTE, but iFixit found that there is actually an LTE chip on board with seven bands of LTE support. We're going to talk about what that actually means in this video, so let's get to the unboxing. All right, so we're going to unbox this first, then I'm going to come back on and give you some first impressions. Now, I mentioned that this has LTE support. Well, not really. It's got the Qualcomm chip that enables LTE, but doesn't have the antenna or the amplifier to make that happen. So while you might sort of be able to get LTE, even if you did something with the software, you still couldn't actually get LTE because you don't have the other parts to do it with. So here we have the Nexus 4, really cool box. 4.7-inch uh, screen, a little bit smaller than we're seeing on some other devices, makes it a little bit more friendly in the hand. And at the core, this is just an Optimus G, and actually that's a great thing because, as mentioned, we get the S4 Pro, we get a really good camera and an amazing screen, and this is running unadulterated Android, just stock Android, with Jelly Bean 4.2, so it's going to be real fast. All right, so let's take this out of the box. Oh. All right, here it goes. Ooh, uh, very nice, very angular, very light. That is impressively light. Let's see if there's any goodies in the box. No, I don't think that there are going to be any goodies. Anyway, so let's take a look at the Nexus 4. Let's do the screen protector peel off Michael Fisher style. Uh, let's listen to it. Oh yeah. I did it a little too fast there. Oh, well, sorry, Michael. So let's uh, let's look around the device. I think we've got some plastic around here. Oh, yeah. You hear that? Real good stuff there. So this is the Nexus 4. It is a lot lighter than you think it would be. Uh, it's got a battery integrated, so you can't take that out. And we've got glass on the front, glass on the back. And that's kind of a liability, because like with the iPhone 4 and 4S, when you drop it, you have a two times more likely chance of cracking something. But uh, Google is selling a bumper, interestingly, for the Nexus 4. So let's uh, let's do a first boot here. Let's actually take a look around the device. So we've got the camera can focus. We've got the power button. Really wish OEMs would do a dedicated camera key. Got to go to Windows Phone 8 for that. Secondary mic, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This is the micro SIM slot. Ah, standard charging here. And this does have wireless charging. It will work with the Qi. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. QI wireless charging standard. So let's turn it on. I'm not very excited to get HSPA plus data, but I think the speed of the, of the device will make it uh, sort of be a fair trade-off. We've got a really interesting uh, tapered edge here. It kind of goes around, which apparently will make it much easier to do gestures with. Very nondescript front here. We've got on-screen buttons. And again, the resolution is 1280 down by 768 across. So you're getting about 48 more pixels than you get on the Galaxy Nexus and the Galaxy S3 and all those other phones that are 720p. So that's nice. So anyway, we're going to set this up and come back in a minute with some first impressions. Alrighty, now I've spent a fair amount of time here with the Nexus 4. Just want to give you some first impressions. Uh, the first first impression is that this screen is tremendously smooth. In fact, it feels like there's a coating of butter on it. Uh, not sure if that's a good thing, actually. It's just so slick. Uh, and maybe it will get less slick as it gets used and there's more oil and grease on it and other dirt particles. Uh, but right out of the box, this is the slickest screen I've ever seen and, 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 and felt. And I don't know if that's a good thing, but it's a really nice w uh, taper that they have going on here. And just the entire front is a piece of glass. Something else to notice 
uh, is that when you turn on the device, you get a ledge here that you don't get on the Galaxy Nexus uh, as much, and you can actually hold the device from that ledge without doing a mispress of the button. So that's kind of cool if you're watching video or doing something in landscape mode. You can have another point to hold on to it in addition to around the earpiece like you normally do. Another observation is that there is an LED notification light down here in the center. Uh, it's really small this time. It's a lot smaller than the Galaxy Nexus. A few other observations in terms of hardware here is that around the entire device, this is a soft touch plastic. So while this front is, is very slick and so is the back, at least you get that rubbery feel when you hold it in your hand, which blends to a pretty good in-hand feel. Uh, it's not the thinnest device ever. It's, it's thin, just not the thinnest. Uh, on the back here, we've got this really cool pattern. No, I'm not talking about all these fingerprints. I'm talking about these little circles that catch the light in a really interesting ways if you get it just right. The back kind of glistens and glows unlike any other phone out there. And again, you're getting a lot of fingerprints there. That's what's going to happen if you have a shiny surface, but these little circles are super cool. Anyway, so uh, let's turn on the Nexus 4 here. I've got it set to 75% screen brightness. I turned off auto brightness because it didn't seem to be strong enough. It didn't seem to put the backlight levels up high enough, and uh, perhaps that's just a matter of getting used to it. But I really want to see the screen shine because it's a nice, nice screen. A 320 PPI screen. You cannot see pixels on this guy. And color saturation, you can probably tell in the video, is just fantastic. Everything looks really sharp and clear. Now in terms of performance, bouncing around, we've got a combination of, of Jelly Bean in addition to uh, the brawny Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro Quad Core. And it, it just, navigating around, it is fast. And there's a lot of cool Android 4.2 stuff that we'll cover later, like Photosphere and uh, widgets on your lock screen. One of them in particular is that if you do a two finger swipe, you should get these quick toggles. The reason why it doesn't come up with two fingers is because I think there's a notification in progress right now, so it doesn't allow you to go into the quick toggles. Now, the quick toggles are actually kind of ugly. They're, they're useful, but they're a little bit ugly. It would be nice if they were a little bit more attractive, and especially if you can move them around. Maybe you want to have uh, your brightness in the upper right corner so you can toggle it quickly. So if you tap and hold thinking that they'd move around, it just doesn't happen that way. Let's jump into the web browser. Google, of course, went with their Chrome web browser, which we're not too fond of. We, found, we find the Chrome web browser to have worse performance than the built-in stock Android browser. And of course, Google wants to push their Chrome browser because it's theirs. They built it from the ground up. Uh, it's their thing. And so let's go to a web page here. We're gonna go to pocketnow.com or over Wi-Fi. You might be wondering how data speeds are on AT&T over HSP+. We're going to test them out in a minute. This is probably going to be the longest first impression video ever. Anyway, so here's pocketnow.com. Uh, the Snapdragon S4 Pro just, just rules. Let's see how long text takes to clear up. Almost instantly. Um, we're going to do a lot of comparisons just to see exactly how fast this browser is. But... You know, first impressions are that it, it's it's quite good. And we can go into landscape here. And as I mentioned, you can hold it by the bezel now on the right because you've got this nice chin over here where you don't have to worry about doing a mispress of the uh, of the on-screen buttons. Okay, so let's turn off Wi-Fi and run speedtest.net on AT&T's HSP Plus network here. So now with quick toggles, we can go into Wi-Fi. And uh, that's not actually a quick toggle. It's a shortcut to the settings. Okay, so Wi-Fi is off. We're waiting for the H to appear, and it's likely we're gonna get H, which means HSDPA, not H+, which is HSPA+. Uh, depending on where you are at that moment in time, it will vary. So strangely, we were not having any luck testing the bandwidth speed with speedtest.net, nor with the FCC test. So we found this QIP speed test, which actually does work. Very strange that the other tests are not working. So let's click start test. It says we're over HSPA, not HSPA+. Kind of know the results we're going to get. We should be a little bit slower here than, uh, well, let's see what the results say. So of course, on AT&T 3G, you'll get anywhere from one down to as high as 10, 11 down, depending on where you are and how many people are on the network at the time. These are pretty poor results. We're gonna have to test this more extensively later when we have better uh, a better signal over HSPA+. You're not gonna get LTE speeds, but you might get bursts of LTE-like speeds. 
So first impressions of the Nexus 4 are quite favorable. Is it better than the Galaxy S3? Should you consider the Droid DNA instead? Time will tell. We're going to take this out into the field, out into the real world, and actually spend some time with it. One thing's for sure. For $299 or $349, this is undoubtedly the best value in Android right now. And with such a fast processor and with a fantastic screen, this might be the best Android phone ever to come out. We're going to find out if that's the case for you in our upcoming review. We're going to have a lot more videos, so be sure you subscribe to the Pocket Now channel here on YouTube to find out when the next video hits. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, and of course, thanks for watching. That's it for now.